markets because our next guest believes the current rally will broaden further in 2024 and he has a 5200 year-end target for the S&P 500. John Stolfus, Oppenheimer Asset Management Chief Investment Strategist, joins us now. What did you have this time last year for the S&P? Out of curiosity, John. Uh, this time last year, it was 4,400. People thought we were overly optimistic, uh, and uh, we were fortunate. Uh, it was a good target. Uh, worked out, I think it was in June, when the uh, market closed above that level. Well, uh, yeah, it turns our, out you weren't optimistic enough, I guess, is the bottom line. But what... what the, how our, do we, why, how do we replicate this performance? Bob and I were just talking about just how much good news is already baked in at this point. You know, Sarah, I've got to say that uh, indeed uh, we think if we, we provide just uh, analytics of, of, of this rally that we've seen, we would have expected that the rally that, that, that has occurred over the last eight weeks or so uh, would have been about half of what it has been. Uh, but what really affected it, as you both mentioned, uh, was the drop in the 10-year yield, uh, which brought back uh, the, uh, which created uh, a, a lot of uh, capitulation by bears, uh, and that process brought a lot of money into the market. We can't help but think that should interest rates rise somewhat, uh, you're going to get a questioning uh, and maybe some take back sometime in the in that first quarter of next of this coming year. It's, just a few days away, uh, but sometime in that in the first quarter. But that said, we think the fundamentals are getting better. The, the Federal Reserve continues to show the Ben Bernanke legacy of high transparency, communicative uh, stance, and great sensitivity to the effects of practicing its mandate on the economy. So to maintain the uh, uh, resilience in the economy, uh, provide for a market that uh, uh, provide for interest rates that don't kill employment, uh, we could very well uh, skirt a recession or maybe even uh, do a soft landing. And that should be good for stocks. And we think underlying all this uh, robust nature of the rally that we've seen is the resilience that has been identified by uh, investors in terms of corporates, uh, labor, uh, and the consumer uh, throughout this Fed funds hype cycle, uh, particularly uh, recognized this year. Uh, John, it's Bob. Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, good to see you. Uh, you're, the, you're the top dog. Uh, you and Tom Lee have the highest estimates on the street. Both of you are at 5,200 for the year-end 2024. Uh, and I notice you have an earnings projections of $240. So I do 5,200 into 24, 240. I get a multiple of 21.7. Is that right? That, that's a very, very high multiple. Is that right? And what would justify such a high multiple? It, 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 the thing is, you know, we're, we're close to that now or have been for a good part of this year. Uh, and we have seen a multiple above 23, which was the peak uh, a multiple that we've seen, the average five-year uh, uh, multiple for the S&P 500. So we're still down significantly from that. One thing you mentioned a little earlier uh, in, in the programming today at CNBC was that more people today are invested in the stock market than ever before. Now, uh, we divide that into two populations just at the broadest level, traders, day traders, players, and then the intermediate to long-term investors. And uh, intermediate to long-term investors uh, have really come into this market. Some of it is just because two generations, both boomers as well as millennials and everything in between and after that are beginning to recognize that Social Security is not going to be able to provide the security that is provided for further generations. And so people in retirement and planning for retirement are investing more in equities, which over the course of uh, the last uh, century have shown to be a very good way to invest for intermediate to longer term goals. Biggest risk for the baby boomer generation is that we, and I'm a boomer, uh, live longer than we expected. And if we want to maintain our standard of living, past performance not being any guarantee of future results, it would appear to us that equities are likely a good place to be. That's great support for equities.